That's okay. I need one big wave. <laughs> so to kick things off, Fish Mooney is back. Can you tell us about yes. the decision to do that? Because we're very excited about it. Or at least I am. Um, you know, one of the things we wanted, we set out to do when we first started the show was just to, to, was to build <laughs> was to build a world populated with people. You know, that we could like bring in and out and out of the world. The same way when you read, you know, the comics, it's the case where like someone will go away for a couple of years and then come back again. So when we established Fish last year and, and she kind of like vanished, we're like, well, we always had the intention of bringing her back. And found almost all of our characters, the characters we would bring back at a certain point. And also, this Jada is awesome. Um, and the one of the ongoing themes we want, to, we want to play in the show is again the theme in the comics is of transformation. So you want to see people as one character and then see them develop and become another person. And Fish just was a, had a real, she uh, was able to do, like, make a great test subject of showing how we could do that in a very extreme way. And so we took, since we left with like, a cliffhanger for getting out of the van, we also wanted to pay that off in a substantial way. So she comes back at least for the first two episodes of this year and causes a lot of havoc. Oh, love it. Yeah. Can you so talk at all about Court and the Owls yeah. uh, and how that is going to work in like a timeline sort of way? Like, is that going to be right from the beginning of the season? Or? Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I got to talk about and tell some stuff and not tell some other stuff, obviously. Um, we will see the court from the very beginning of the year. Um, they will also arc through the entire year. We will see them. And they will feature more substantially in the second half of the year. But we will visit them and learn more about them in the first part of the year. Like, I mean, from the first episode. Just. So the theme of the season is Heroes Will Fall. So can you give any hints about that? Sure, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of it is the case, too, where... You know, we, we we imagine sort of like a continuum for all of our characters, and they're like, they, they want them all to drift backwards and forwards, like on the axis towards the light or the dark or what have you. And so, even though you you watch like what Gordon did last year, and you're going, wow, how much worse can that get? Um, it actually can get a lot worse. So we wanted a few of our core characters um, are going to go to like really dark places. Okay? Substantially, I know that's such a big statement. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, Gordon and Bruce and Selena all have really um, sort of like dark and troubled journeys over the course of the year. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> so, what is the process for determining like which villains? Like, how did, how did we come up with the Mad Hatter? Thanks, you. Um, a lot of it's just villains that you, as like a fan, would, would want to see. Like, like you know, it's like, oh, I always wanted, I wanted to play X villain or Y villain. Um, some of it is the case of what villains we are allowed to use, which villains are not in Suicide Squad, or which villains are going to be used for an upcoming movie. So you have, among that rogues gallery, you have a certain like, miniature that are you going to take. And then, secondly, there's a decision on our part not to go with fantasy or like, too, too, too sci-fi on the part of that. So we want to have villains who are that villains who are more grounded. Um, and like with the Hatter, it's very much a case where I love the way he speaks, I always love the way he speaks, and he always feels like he always came at things with a level of anger and insecurity and a desire to belong. That, that was, you know, what was driving his psychosis, which I thought was like an inter interesting sort of like push for a villain. Um, and he felt very colorful, and he was fit very much into that. And so, like, that's the case, and, and then we just, like, we've highlighted another half dozen villains that one or two we'll see this year, and the others we'll hopefully see in years to come. With the overall look and feel of the show, what source material did you guys look at in order to build to build out the, the look and feel of the characters and the backdrop and the Gotham City? Sure. Um, lots of different things. Some stuff from the Batman universe, some stuff from Beyond, obviously. Um, there was uh, a, a lot of Batman Year One kind of went into the look and feel of the show. Um, some of the movie Seven went into a lot of it as well. And also Blade Runner, especially in the sense of the verticality. Like, like, you know, there's the world above, and then there's Harrison Ford always you know, the group wanted everything to really as much as possible to take place down there in the, in the alleyways and the sewers. So, yeah. The show has some amazing dynamics between uh, Bruce and uh, Celine and between uh, Jim and Leslie. What can we expect from this relationship? Going forward, um, 
In terms of Selena and Bruce, we're going to see a big step taken forward in their relationship this year. Um, so we're really going to see the sort of the young guy, the young Catwoman, like together in a, in, a, in a much more substantial way than, than, they, than they were in previous years. Because we, the approach we took this year was saying, okay, they are these iconic characters, and on the other hand, there are also 15, 16 year old boys and girls uh, who are attracted to one another. And so how is that going to happen? And what sort of damage can they do to one another to make it so that in the future, Batman and Catwoman can actually never quite consummate or have trouble consummating? Uh, their relationship. So we, we try to bring them together and actually have them uh, both be meaningful to one another and have issues the way any sort of teenage romance is going to And in terms of Lee and, uh, and Jim, uh, issues will happen between season one and season two that will lead to problems in that relationship more problems in that relationship. And a lot of the arc of this year will be Jim, Jim sort of finding his way back to me. Can you talk about the decision to age Ivy Cooper a little bit and how that might affect the person to Ivy Yeah. Um, we, the decision was we thought it might be interesting to do, and uh, we thought we could... There were storylines we wanted to play with Ivy that we were, we were just not able to play with the actors. She was one of the one of the, the two years we had her, but we couldn't play the storylines we wanted to play with the uh, age of the actors. So she does age up early on, I mean, in season one. And then, because Ivy, the mentality of the Ivy that we have in our world is not the same, quite the same as the Ivy we just in, in the canon. She's a bit more um, of a loose canon, and so she goes and creates a great deal of havoc. And because she still is sort of a 14 year old street teenager in the body of a 25 year old woman, she does not act in the world yet, and so she has to like find her way. What was it about the show that drew you to the project initially? Um, I mean, I was, I've been a Batman fan since, you know, was, you know, I mean, for me, it was a case where uh, when I was a kid, I was a comic book fan, you know? I mean, like, as many people, I say my journey with many people of my generation was you read comics, you read comics, you read comics, and then you had that moment when you read uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil run, and you're like, oh my god, this is what they can actually be. And so for me, when Miller went over to do the Dark Knight, um, uh, Dark Knight Returns, I was like, that actually drew me to Batman for the first time, and so I started reading Batman heavily from that point on. So then I came out and you know, started doing different television shows, um, and then when Bruno called me about this, it was just something that I had held in the back of my mind that I wanted, wanted to do. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.